the reins of the International Space Station were passed from Expedition 25 Commander Doug Wheelock to Expedition 26 Commander Scott Kelly in a ceremony aboard the complex November 24th. The other station crew members looked on. Wheelock, Shannon Walker, and Fyodor Yurchikin will return to Earth in their Soyuz TMA-19 spacecraft November 25th for a parachute-assisted landing on the steps of Kazakhstan. On November 25, 2010, the Expedition 2425 crew of Fyodor Yurchikin, Shannon Walker, and Doug Wheelock boarded Soyuz TMA-19 for the return trip to Earth. They undocked from the Rosfet on November 26th and performed a separation burn to move away from the station, deorbited, and landed safely on the steps of Kazakhstan later that day. On December 15, 2010, Soyuz TMA-20 launched atop a Soyuz FG carrier rocket from Site-15 at the Baikonur Cosmodrome. Engines at maximum thrust and liftoff of the Soyuz TMA-20 as Katie Coleman, Paolo Nespoli, and Dmitry Kondratiev head toward the International Space Station. Lighting up the night sky there at the Baikonur Cosmodrome is a good pitch program according to flight controllers. Uh, catching our first glimpse of the Soyuz TMA-20 as it uh, continues its approach for docking. After the standard two-day rendezvous orbit, Soyuz TMA-20 approached the station and docked with the Rosfet module. Preliminary orbit after its launch from the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan early Thursday morning Kazakhstan time, which was Wednesday U.S. time. Once uh, the uh, Soyuz arrives at the International Space Station and uh, leak checks are confirmed to uh, provide the hatch opening and the greetings uh, between uh, the two crews that then will become one as Expedition 26 uh, is augmented back to a six-person crew. Kondratiev, Coleman, and Nespoli, along with their crewmates, face an extremely busy few months ahead with a variety of international vehicles arriving uh, at the International Space Station. An excellent view right now from external cameras on the International Space Station as you look at the Soyuz TMA-20. Yes. Please come in. is opened officially at 5.02 p.m. Central Time. Dmitry Kondratiev arrives on the International Space Station in the Rosviet module. Happy to see the crew that was on board the station, Sasha, Alex, Ripachka, and Scott. Congratulations. On January 22, 2011, the Japanese HTV Kanatori-2 cargo vehicle launched atop an H-2B rocket from the Tanegashima Space Center filled with supplies for the Expedition 26 crew. The Japanese HTV cargo craft heading for a rendezvous with the International Space Station next Thursday. Pitch maneuver complete. The HTV now heading toward the southeast out over the Pacific Ocean. We had a liftoff of the H-2B launch vehicle number two with the Konotori 2 on board from the Tanegashima Space Center at 2.37. 57 p.m. on January 22, 2011, Japan Standard Time. After liftoff, the launch vehicle operation control was shifted from the blockhouse to the range control center. 
Look at 50 seconds into the flight, the Japanese HTV and his H2B booster already going supersonic. The HTV is fl now flying over the Pacific Ocean to the southeast with its initial flight angle of 108.5 degrees. One minute and 10 seconds into the flight, all systems performing well. Coming up on the point when the four solid rocket boosters will burn out. The H2B is now flying smoothly. SRBA burnout. Jackson confirming uh, separation of the solid rocket boosters. These uh, come off two at a time. SRBA The first and second pairs of the SLVA were jettisoned. Both pairs of solid rocket boosters are now separated. One minute and 30 seconds from now, the uh, fairing that uh, protects and covers up the HTV at the very top of that rocket will jettison. At that point, the rocket will be 75 miles in altitude. The Ogasawa station has started tracking. It's three minutes after liftoff. The engine engine is engine The first stage engine combustion attitude control and flight trajectory are all normal. Current altitude is about 108 kilometers. The velocity is approximately 2.2 kilometers per second. Payload fairing jettison. Confirmation that the fairing has been jettisoned. First stage will continue to burn for two more minutes. There you see the uh, smoke trail left there above the Tanagashima Space Center. The first stage engine combustion attitude control and flight trajectory are all normal. On January 23rd, 2011, the day after the Kanaturi 2 launch, Progress M08M, now filled with the station's refuse, undocked from the Pierce module. It was deorbited the next day over the Pacific Ocean. After a week-long rendezvous orbit, Kanaturi 2 approached the station on January 27, 2011, where it was grabbed by the station's Canada Arm 2 and berthed to the nadir port of the Harmony module. Before STS-133 would arrive, the station crew moved Conatory 2 to the zenith port of Harmony to make extra room for the shuttle, and then moved it back after the shuttle left. On January 28, 2011, Progress M09M launched atop a Soyuz U carrier rocket from Site 15 at the Baikonur Cosmodrome. Oh, 
подъема двигатель центрального и боковых блоков ракеты на дизеле вышли на режим главной ступени. After the standard two-day rendezvous orbit, Progress M09M arrived at the ISS on January 30th, 2011, successfully docking to the Pierce at 2.39 Universal Coordinated Time. On February 16th, 2011, the second European ATV, named after the German astronomer Johannes Kepler, launched atop an Ariane 5 launch vehicle from Kourou in French Guiana. Confirmé. Top, allumage AB, décollage. DDO has just called out the separation of the boosters. You can see what that looks like. There's another one out of camera range on the left, but they fall back down right on time at about uh, 64 kilometers up, I think. Cross the atmospheric layers, and then uh, now we don't need this uh, two tons weight anymore. On February 20th, 2011, four days after the launch of Johannes Kepler, Progress M07M, which was then docked to the aft port of the Svezda module, undocked from the station and was deorbited over the Pacific Ocean, leaving the port free for the ATV. The Johannes Kepler ATV traveled over eight days to catch up with the International Space Station and arrived at the aft port of the Svezda module on February 24, 2011. While docked, the ATV would boost the orbit of the ISS several times and provide valuable cargo for the Expedition 26 crew. The station was now ready for the next shuttle flight, STS-133. 